We're talking today with Mr. Robert Hext of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, Bob, can you start us off with some background on yourself, uh, like where and when you were born and where you grew up? Sure. Yes, I, I was uh, uh, born in 1918 in, in Lansing, Michigan. And my dad worked for the state insurance department at the time, and that's why we were there. And then he was transferred back to Grand Rapids when I was six months old. And uh, so I, I consider myself a, a natural born a Grand Rapidian. And uh, I, I, I went to Ottawa Hills, the original Ottawa Hills High School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, did uh, did your father keep his job in the 1930s? Uh, uh, well, he stayed in the insurance business. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he he joined an insurance company in okay. in, in in Grand Rapids uh, at that time, and uh, right. and uh, so I I've been there ever since. Okay. And, uh, uh, many of my uh, uh, friends uh, went along with the University of Michigan with me, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just made it through in, in 1941 uh, when I graduated. Uh, the war was right on the horizon. Okay. And now, uh, before the war, before America got into the war. Uh, so like in 1939, 40, 41, when you're in college, were you paying attention to the news in the world? Oh, well, uh, oh, oh yes, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I did pay attention to it. Uh, uh, looking back uh, now, I, uh, not an, I can't imagine that I wasn't more interested mm -hmm. in it than I, I it, it means a lot more to me now than it sure. did then. Um, uh, but because it's particularly when I can see some of the results, uh, uh, two of my fraternity brothers uh, were in the Naval Reserve and th they were juniors when I was a, a senior. In fact, w we were all sitting together. I had, I had gone back to a, a homecoming uh, a par a fraternity party. Uh, on uh, Saturday night, December sixth, and I stayed. I stayed for the night in the fraternity house. So we were all sitting around listening to the news on the radio the next morning. Mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor was announced. So uh, that uh, uh, my t t my two good friends were. They didn't even have a chance to finish their junior year, mm -hmm. they went immediately into the service and they were both killed uh, immediately in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, you, and, and yeah. It turned out to be those were the only two men we lost in World War II. Mm -hmm. but, uh, now were they killed in like the, the naval battles off the of Guadalcanal? In, 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 yeah, they were on patrol oh, boats. Oh, patrol uh, boats, okay. Yeah, blown up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, as for you, now, tell me a little bit about what life was like at the University of Michigan while you were there. Well, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I probably shouldn't say it, uh, but uh, uh, much more to, in my favor than than today. I mean, the, the the liberal left was, there was no such thing uh, then. Um, they, uh, it's, uh, it, it's hard for me to understand what's going on today mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the, the liberal left. Uh, and, and, and so that's anybody's uh, personal Sure. Decision. I was asking a little bit more about what life was like for the students there. Mm. What, what was it like to be a student there at oh, that time? Well, well it was wonderful. Uh, uh, and there again, you, you learn it's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, people really enjoyed the, the, the big group uh, uh, meetings. Uh, I found that I liked the, the small, my my favorite class uh, was uh, uh, one in English literature. There were 12 men in mm -hmm. the class, 
and and that was that was more to my liking. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, now, what were you studying at the time? Well, uh, just a, a, a general uh, uh, literature, science, and arts. Okay. Uh, uh, I, uh, I majored in English mm -hmm. and speech. And, uh, okay. I, I had uh, the possible thoughts of uh, going into the broadcast business, uh, which uh, one of my uh, uh, friends uh, in there uh, did. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he became quite well known for two reasons. Uh, his name was Tom Harmon, and uh, so he uh, he became a, an a athlete, uh, a football hero, mm -hmm. uh, and and he did go into the broadcast uh, uh, business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So now you graduated in 1941. Yeah. Is that right. Okay. And then what did you do after you graduated? Uh, well, uh, uh, the, I I already knew that it was just it, was, it wasn't a matter of looking for something permanent because mm -hmm. I knew what was we all knew what was coming up. Uh, uh, so I had been a friend. Of, I would. I was kind of brought up in the clothing business because uh, uh, a, a, a friend of mine, her dad owned a clothing store in, in Grand Rapids. Uh, it, it was in the Morton House, which at that time was the, uh, that was the finest. If you wanted something a little nicer than the Pantland, you went to the Morton mm -hmm. House. and. Uh, uh, so on uh, Saturdays and uh, in, in the summer vacation, I worked uh, for him in the clothing business, and so that's what I I went back uh, into to that when I graduated, knowing that it was just a a matter of time, and then when December seventh came, uh, uh, I I took uh, right after the first of the year. I, I enlisted or got going on mm -hmm. the enlisting process, and, uh, and uh, All right. uh, 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 this is just uh, uh, an aside, not important, but uh, it's kind of an interesting fact if you didn't know it before that uh, um, my uh, serial number is 16062966. It begins with a one. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, that meant that I enlisted. Right. Uh, if you did, you know that, did, that yes. if uh, if your serial number began with three, that meant you were uh, drafted. All uh, right. Now, did you choose which branch to go into? Oh, yeah. I uh, I thought maybe that I was going to because uh, uh, Henry. Uh, Henry McNaughton was our principal at Ottawa, and he was a former, he was an officer in World War One, and he was still in the reserves. And I talked to him about getting in, and uh, he wrote up a little synopsis for me to to take along the the day that I went uh, to Fort Custer. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, uh, this uh, with me. And uh, the the officer running, taking care of me, uh, I, I showed it to him, and uh, I, uh, I wouldn't say that he laughed in my face. Uh, he just smiled, and he said, that's interesting, and he said, hang on to that information, but today we need 500 medics. And uh, mm -hmm. so uh, that, uh, he said, you're... Uh, I don't know whether, I don't think he told me, then then we went back, got our shots and went back to the barracks and then a sergeant came through and said, you are now in the 12th General Hospital. Okay. <laughs> now, what had you requested? Uh, well, uh, it was, uh, it was information uh, that would uh, uh, put me into the or oh, quartermaster corps, possibly okay. uh, some mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a desk <laughs> yeah. a job, uh, uh, and uh, particularly the way that it turned out that uh, it was because of 
if they hadn't told me I was in the 12th General Hospital, if I'd gone somewhere else, I never would have met my wife. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Uh, so that works out for you in, in the end. Yeah. You know? But at this point, they are trying to build an army very quickly, mm -hmm. and they need a lot of different people in different areas. Oh, yeah. And because probably in part because you've had the college yeah. education, they wanted to put you well, someplace. Well, uh, that, that like was that. A, another angle there. That then when we were in North Africa, ready to set up. Um, uh, a, a captain, a major, a major Martin. He was a brain surgeon, uh, and uh, uh, he had the, the good idea of, uh, on all of our records that showed what your top, how far you had gone in school, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he knew that in the operating room they would need a certain type of person, and. Uh, uh, he asked me if I would be interested in uh, being in surgery, and I I said that I would be, and uh, and my wife was an anesthetist, so you know, they that went together. We uh, as tough as things sometimes were, where we would uh, operate till nine or ten o'clock at night, and then go have something to eat. Uh, um, we worked together because I was uh, I was helping a surgeon right. and she was right there at the head of the bed with the patient uh, yeah. putting him to sleep. Right. And you got there in part because you had that education in your background. So uh, uh, right. right. Okay. Yeah. So to go it, back to it was interesting yeah. to me. Right. I, uh, so we'll go back now to your story. You've been informed uh, that you're going to go to the 12th General Hospital. Mm -hmm. All right. And so where then did you report for duty first? Uh, well, we, uh, we, uh, we had our basic training right there at Fort Custer. Right. In fact, then already things were getting tied up a little bit. Uh, they, I think, uh, their plans was it was just a matter of time till we would go to England. That was the, the scuttlebutt, at least, that, that was the plan. And uh, uh, things weren't happening, so we went through basic training a second time. Uh, and then they didn't know what to do with us because then it was really time to go overseas. So for an interim, they sent us to Fort Benjamin Harrison in Indiana in the mudslides down there. It was fall. Uh, uh, unbelievable! Uh, the mud down there was so bad that we, you couldn't even march. You couldn't do anything. So we we pretty much sat there for two months until then we got the signal go to New York. Okay. And, um, now to back up a little bit, can you describe what you did in basic training? Hmm. What what did you do during basic training? Uh, oh uh, well, we went on ten mile marches and. Uh, uh, the, the, I will say that uh, they put you in very good shape um, uh, after all of uh, we went through that training. Uh, when I went overseas, I always weighed about, the uh, University of Michigan said that I weighed 175 uh, pounds, and when we went overseas, uh, I weighed 185 and my 34-inch waist had gone to 33, mm -hmm. so I, I was in the best condition <laughs> I'd ever been in my life, uh, thanks to uh, the, the basic training. Okay. Um, now, when you were doing that training, was it only the new enlisted men who did that, or did they make the officers and doctors uh, do uh, that? Oh, the officers had, and uh, not, we didn't do it with them, but oh yeah, the officers and nurses had to go through uh, I, I don't think the nurses ever uh, didn't go on 10 mile marches, mm -hmm. but uh, the doctors did. Okay. And, uh, you know. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so basically, you're part of the unit, and they're really, they were only forming the unit at that time when you joined it, right? So you're with them from the beginning. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So you're in. So basically, this is 1942 when this is happening. You train at Fort Custer, and then you go down to Indiana. Uh, yep. And then when there you was, leave Indiana, where do you go next? Uh, uh, to Staten Island. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 Fort Kilm Fort, we were at Fort Kilmer for uh, three or four days, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Camp 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 Kilmer, camp, camp, camp. I guess it was, yeah. And and then after three or four days, you know, just waiting, and then we got on a train and uh, and went to Staten Island and and got on the ships, and um, uh, there were, there were three. Uh, well, there were twenty ships uh, in our convoy, uh, and you know, there was some argument there. Um, I I did something that you are. Uh, I had already learned you should never do it. Uh, I enlisted for I uh, I I as volunteered <laughs> that uh, they were looking uh, for someone uh, to work in the sick bay of the ship, and I said that I'd do that. It turned out to be the best thing I ever did because it, it was a very rough crossing. Uh, and the, the, a lot of the uh, fellows were were really sick, uh, and uh, I I was up, and they were all down. The lower you were in the ship, the worse it was, and our bunks were way down the bottom. Uh, I was up high uh, in uh, in this cabin, and I had one one patient, a fellow that had broken his arm, and uh, so. I, I had a, a very enjoyable uh, trip. Okay. Uh, now, uh, roughly, when was it that you took that voyage? What time of year was it? Well, de uh, December, December 12th, uh, we, we took off from, uh, and it took uh, 13 days mm -hmm. to zigzag across. And um, uh, th there, there were 20 ships in the convoy, but three of them were 12th General Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, the the ship that I they were all Liberty ships, and uh, the 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 ship that I was on, we had no nurses. Uh, the other two we did have some, and it was uh, they all had uh, names. And one of the other three was the Florence Nightingale, <laughs> which was uh, quite uh, fitting for for the nurses to go over on that. Um, uh, but in one of those uh, uh, pamphlets that you were looking at, uh, I thought at the time uh, it was doubly interesting that uh, this nurse said, uh, as we pass the lady with the lamp, there was not a dry eye. Well, uh, she she didn't know. I don't think what uh, because that had become a name for the Statue of Liberty. Right. But it all it actually started with Florence Nightingale. Mm -hmm. She was the lady with the lamp, right. and uh, uh, so that that was an interesting try right. on. Now, did you have any uh, problems with the U-boats when you crossed? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, no, uh, no, we didn't, uh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we got to the Straits of Gibraltar, uh, uh, 15 of the ships s went south to Casablanca mm -hmm. because that's where their, the loading supplies were all there, right. but uh, five came through and they had a, a string of blue lights laid out uh, uh, from at, starting at Gibraltar and you the ships had to stay right in that path and and we made it okay, okay. Um, and so we uh, we got uh, got there all right. Oh, uh, we actually arrived on Christmas Day mm -hmm. uh, and they knew that we would be very busy that day. So we had our Christmas dinner on the ship the day before and then uh, landed at, uh, at uh, as everybody says, Oran because it was closest to that. Uh, and uh, of the uh, uh, of our three ships, w the one that didn't have m my ship, that didn't have any nurses, we actually docked in a harbor 
before Oran. It was Merz el Kabir, mm -hmm. and uh, there were some. Uh, the, most of the French Navy <laughs> was in was dock was in harbored in Merz el Kabir mm -hmm. at the time, and. Uh, uh, of all the mistakes that can be made, I did have to give the army, I, I don't know how they arranged that, but uh, uh, we were closer to, we were wet, Merz el Kabir was west of Oran, so it was a shorter walk, which we did when we got off the ship, we, we walked from there to Ain el Turk, about 10 miles. If it had been nurses, that wouldn't have. So I, I've often, I imagine that they had that figured out. Mm -hmm. That the the other two ships with nurses did go into the Oran Harbor, and then they were, they came by truck and ambulance uh, to our site. Right. Yeah. And you guys got to walk. Yeah, okay. we walked. Right. All right. Now this uh, Ain El Turk, this place where you're gonna your hospital sets up. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe the oh, hospital yes, and the yeah, place? Yeah. A, a, of course. Uh, as soon after we had been out for three or four days on the ship, and everybody talking about England, they they passed out a pamphlet. You are going to North Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, we all, when is, it going to, when is it going to start getting warmer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, it never did. It was nasty, cold, uh, rainy uh, when we got there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so we, uh, uh, we just had to, uh, to work and, right. and uh, ev everybody suffered together there. There was no, uh, n no place to eat. Uh, they just picked out this spot and uh, Ain El Turk uh, was uh, a vacation. It was mostly French mm -hmm. and the French came there during the, 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 the warm season for, for vacations. Right. And uh, in fact, um, uh, when uh, something that I wish that I had uh, uh, picked up, but I, uh, I didn't have a chance. Uh, uh, for three days, we weren't allowed to go uh, up into the little town at all. They had to kind of see if it was safe first. Uh, we finally did let us up, and I saw this sign lying up there. It said, Viva Darlan. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know who Darlan uh, was, but I, I, I had a feeling that I wish I'd take that sign, but I don't know what I could do with it. So I, I, I never did, but I, I sure wish now that I had, because I, I would have, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, I showed you the picture right behind you there, and then around, I'll show it to you afterwards, the fisherman of Capri, a, a beautiful oil piece. Mm -hmm. uh, it was no frame, it was on wood because they, they couldn't get canvas. Uh, uh, and uh, my, my wife-to-be put that in her footlocker and brought it home. There, mm -hmm. no, I, it wouldn't have fit in my barracks bag, right. <laughs> uh, and uh, and so that sign could have gone in her uh, yeah. footlocker. Right now, what kind of facilities did you have there? Did you have tents or buildings or uh, the, uh, built buildings? Uh, everything there. Yes, so we uh, everything was in villas built on a on a steep hill, uh, and. Uh, Everything was carved into. It was very nice. The the accommodations were good. Once we finally got cots, mm -hmm. we we slept on the on the floor when we got there, and I don't recall what we had an A bag and a B bag, and our I think it was our B bag didn't show up. Yeah, so uh, you had a blanket, w one blanket packed in each barracks bag. Uh, so we had one blanket, not two. So we uh, were we were forced to double up and uh, you know, with a with a, a buddy, one blanket under and one over you, and your a shirt or something mm -hmm. for a pillow. Right. And, uh, um, 
and it was really, really cold. And, uh, yeah, and they set up, we ate outside. The, the doctors, nurses, everybody sat in the, so uh, when, you, when you had your mess gear and we were eating English rations, so you'd get this, uh, this English muffin, uh, mutton, uh, mutton uh, and uh, when it got uh, the cold rain on the mutton, uh, <laughs> uh, caused, caused, and plus hardtack, uh, uh, so um, I, uh, I lost about 20 pounds uh, the first couple of months that I was uh, there, but uh, after, it took them you know, when we arrived on Christmas Day, then uh, it took the whole uh, month of January to, to set up, uh, I think it was February 3rd when we accepted our first, and we had a lineup of ambulances waiting to, with uh, uh, patients to, to get in. And yeah, because that was right about the time of when the Germans attacked at, at Kasserine Pass. Oh, it was uh, bef it was before. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, you know, that was uh, uh, that was horrible. Yeah. The uh, uh, and, and no penicillin. That was a shame. That uh, they were being treated with sulfa at the lines, and it wasn't doing any good. So they had gangrene by the time they got back to us. And so unfortunately, we had to remove a lot of arms and legs that uh, would have been saved if, uh, if we'd had penicillin. But, uh, right, because I guess even before, before Kasserine, the Americans were advancing and attacking, so there was some fighting going on. Oh, 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 oh But yeah, then there's a yeah, lot that more. Was bad. Yeah, that was, uh, of course, in, in, uh, of course I, I've read about that since. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was, uh, one of our our worst losses were at Casser of the mm -hmm. whole war yeah. were at Casserine Pass and mm -hmm. uh, and we we saw it. Okay. We, and yeah. Now you mentioned that one of the doctors brought you in to work with him in surgery. Mm -hmm. Now did you start doing that right away? Or? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learned fast. Oh. <laughs> And now, um, then, did you stay very busy for several months now? Uh, yes, yeah, well, yeah, oh yes. It really, uh, it didn't let up too much there. And in fact, it got, it was getting worse and uh, it culminated with Kasserine Pass. And uh, we didn't uh, realize, I mean, uh, you'd, You'd think we were losing by the number of patients that we had. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, uh, we we weren't. Uh, Rommel was he uh, at Kasserine Pass. He realized it was the jig was up for, mm -hmm. for them. That uh, that was that was the end. Yeah. And uh, P Patton wasn't happy either. <laughs> he, yeah, he he didn't like the uh, the losses. But, yeah. um, so uh, well, no, no, nobody was happy, but it, but it, it was the, uh, the end of the, the war in North Africa. Right. And that's sort of the Germans attack in February, and then we a counterattack in March and April and drive them out. But that's a lot of hard fighting and a lot of casualties. Oh, yes. So even when you are winning, you still have a yeah. lot of people yeah. to help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the, the word that we got that uh, be just before Kasserine Pass that, mm -hmm. that Rommel was winning. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, that, well, right. yeah. Now, did uh, now once you got once the Germans leave and they evacuate Tunisia, do you get a little bit of a break there for a uh, while? Yes, yeah, yeah, a, a little, a little bit, not not. Not much, really, yeah. because uh, th that's when uh, then they sent us the, the group of men first. Uh, again, we had another uh, meal on the on a ship uh, when uh, we headed across to go to to, to Naples. Okay. Uh, that was on on thanks. We had our Thanksgiving dinner on the ship that right. time. Yeah. But that is, that, that's six months after the Germans leave North Africa, 
But in between, we landed oh. in Sicily. Yeah. Did you get casualties sent over from Sicily to you, or did they go someplace else? Because it's July, August. Yeah. That's when the, that was going on. Um, I can't recall it being uh, that uh, long uh, because, uh, of course, there wasn't much to there wasn't much to do uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 there. Um, uh, no. Well, did your hospital just treat people for a short period of time and then move the, them somewhere else, or would they stay in oh, your hospital uh, for a long we, time? Uh, uh, we we stayed uh, we, uh, in in North Africa. Yeah. But did did the patients stay there? Oh, uh, uh, well, um, um, most well, I, it depends on what they. Uh, what they had. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't repeat some of the uh, uh, things that uh, uh, one of my best friends worked on on a ward uh, uh, where uh, there, the, the patients w were all they had uh, d dysentery mm -hmm. uh, and, and na nasty, nasty. Uh, it, it, uh, wasn't good, but uh, but uh, but they they went back. Mm -hmm. They they would, we fixed most of them up, but mm -hmm. of course, like all those uh, people, where we uh, had amputees and serious head wounds, they all were flown back to the United States mm -hmm. from from our. Okay. But so, so even in a period when there was not a lot of, there wasn't fighting going on in North Africa, you still had a lot of patients there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they are getting ready to invade Italy, and they'll yeah. do that in September. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when they first invaded Italy, did casualties come back from Italy to your hospital? Because uh, uh, from Salerno or places like that? Uh, when, uh, the, well, like I said, uh, uh, the, the first patients that I ever took care of in uh, in Naples mm -hmm. was when I was with the uh, on detached service right. with the 21st right. General, okay. and and everybody was in the same boat. Uh, my wife to be was working in a station hospital, but then the the the, the minute uh, that uh, the Anzio beachhead broke, mm -hmm. then. Uh, you know, Seven days after the Germans got out of Anzio, we landed in Anzio. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we went by ship, uh, okay. all of our people from uh, Naples to Anzio, and then by truck from Anzio to Rome. Okay. And, uh, now let's go back a little bit here. So I, have, I was just trying to kind of sort out the time that you spent in North Africa yeah. and what you were doing during that time. Yeah. But basically you were mostly dealing with the patients who had been serving in North yeah. Africa. Yeah. Okay. And then at the end of the year in, in 43, then you get on the boat, you go and you land at Naples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now uh, kind of explain a little bit more fully here what the situation was. Your hospital arrives at Naples. And then what happens to the hospital personnel? Our, uh, our, our hospital personnel all broke into small groups and went to probably six different uh, hospitals that had already been set up. And uh, it was an interesting spot. That, that would be something to talk about. That, uh, uh, and I, I have a I have a book that I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, put out uh, it was uh, Mussolini in in 1940. They had planned uh, like a uh, uh, an international exposition, almost a world's fair. That it never uh, mm -hmm. it never happened. They uh, they didn't finish. Uh, there were some buildings that were finished, some not. Uh, the, the the hospital that the twenty first general that I went to was in one of those buildings that uh, that was finished, mm -hmm. and uh, this book that I'm going to show you uh, uh, was in, in in another in an unfinished, so it got wet, and uh, but uh, it has Mussolini's picture in it, and. Um, uh, 
and and then, like I say, uh, up to Anzio, and then of course we immediately uh, got when we got to Rome, uh, they uh, you could see uh, fires still burning in places, mm -hmm. and uh, trucks that were still smoking and smoldering, uh, and um, so we we got in there. Right. Uh, again, seven days after the Germans got out of there, we were in in Rome. Okay. So let's go back. Go back to Naples now. Yeah. Because I want to talk more about Naples before we get to okay. Rome. We're kind right. of doing an order. Okay. What kind of condition was the city of Naples in when you got there? Oh, uh, very, very bad. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, even we. We discovered later that uh, Naples was kind of a dirty city anyway. That uh, uh, even though they had this great opera house and some nice, uh, some nice buildings, uh, it it was uh, a bad bad city. And, and of course, that was multiplied many times by being bombed out mm -hmm. as it was. And, um, uh, so. Yeah, there was there wasn't a there wasn't a chance to do <laughs> we did nothing but take care of patients uh, there we were yeah. very, very busy because when you were there the whole the fighting at Monte Cassino was going on and then the Anzio landing started and Anzio didn't have much room for a hospital so oh. I guess they sent everybody back to you uh, oh yeah that's right correct. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was no. There was nothing. Nothing except this big Bertha, this, uh, this huge gun that they were just picking us off. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But there was a, there was a lot of hard fighting there. A lot of casualties. Mm -hmm. So that was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, the now Naples itself. I mean, that was a place where there were during the war there were problems with with crime and prostitution and the black market stuff and so forth. There were a lot of things going on in Naples, yeah. but did the people assigned to your hospital just have to work so much that... You didn't even know that was going on, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, when you, you mentioned prostitution, of course, uh, we did get into that. Uh, uh, some of our uh, guys uh, uh, intentionally became infected mm -hmm. uh, in, in order to not have to go to Anzio or, or wherever. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, th there was a little tie in there that uh, I guess they probably would have found it anyway, but it was easy, it was easy to find in, 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 in Naples. Okay. Right? Now, as for yourself, um, were you already romantically involved with the woman you married later? When you got uh, well, uh, 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 yes, uh, but uh, not no chance to do, no free time. Right. To, yeah. So, you, know, so you, then, but you, you couldn't then see we're, each other. We're coming a little later, and yeah. uh, when we had uh, toward the end mm -hmm. uh, of our stay in in Rome, and toward the end of our stay uh, in Livorno, right. there was a chance to do some sightseeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but she was on a different post than yours. So. Correct. Right. right. You know, I never I, I never saw her in uh, in, in Naples. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Yeah. So again you've got but but pretty much the whole time you're in Naples you're very work, busy work. because of yeah. all that campaign. Yeah. Now uh, did you try to keep track of the progress of the campaign at all or follow the news? Uh, or? Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, we, uh, we usually were able to get a hold of the Stars and Stripes and, uh, and, and knew what was going on. Uh, uh, I wish we'd had more radio, the radios were working but mm -hmm. uh, for some reason we'd didn't have any. <laughs> Maybe some officer did have, but uh, we didn't have any radio. Okay. Uh, so I, I couldn't listen to Tokyo Rose or uh, 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 Dirty Gertie from Bizzerti. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, 
See, now the hospital that you were working in, the 21st General. Uh, 12, 12th General well, no, was but, ours. But, but, they, but they attached you to the 21st. Yep. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, with that hospital, were you in, okay, you so said that, that was in hospital buildings that were built for uh, Mussolini. Uh, yeah, okay. Yep. So, you, so you had reasonably good facilities there. I was at least. doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. I was working in the operating right. room. The same. Okay. The same thing. All right. And then. Um, were you, when they told you you were going to Anzio, were you surprised? Oh, well, uh, I don't, uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, I was surprised that, uh, uh, but by that time you didn't uh, qu question anything. <laughs> All right, but you just landed there and then you we moved just up to Rome. Just over, uh, uh, I, I don't. I don't recall whether we, uh, uh, if we stayed. I, I don't think we stayed at all. They, Maybe not. They, I, we didn't have any. We couldn't have. So we, we must just. Uh, the trucks must have been there to meet us. Uh, right. mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you got to Rome, uh, what facilities did you have there? What buildings did uh, you have? Uh, the, it had been a huge school. Uh, and uh, it was in, in good good condition, uh, and uh, and the, the big sign Rastplatz. The mm -hmm. uh, the Germans had been there for a rest for a rest place. That that's how they had been using it. And seven days after they, uh, it it was uh, obvious how fast we got to Rome. Uh, that uh, things were really. It, it was like they had just walked out the day before. Okay. So, did the Germans leave a lot of things behind? Uh, uh, no, okay. no, 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 they didn't. No, a few rats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they may have been there. All right. Uh, and then, how long did it take to get the hospital up and running? Um, I well. Uh, a couple of, I guess, probably uh, ten days or something like that. That's a, a good question because uh, uh, I, I suppose the fact that we had done it before, uh, it took us when we uh, we landed on, like I said, on Christmas Day mm -hmm. in, in in North Africa, and uh, it was uh, 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 February third, so it took a month. To, to get it ready, but we had to open everything, all these, that was an entering aside that the, uh, uh, the first, and you didn't know where they, you just opened a carton and then had to figure out what to do with it. The, uh, uh, the first carton that I opened was folding chairs from, the, uh, Grand, uh, from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 all right. American seating right. company. You know. Yeah, but but this time you. you but so it went it was fast yeah. uh, for some reason that uh, it I I don't uh, ten days maybe something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well probably your own people packed everything up. Yeah. So maybe they knew where to find things. Yeah. But okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, uh, once you set up at Rome, did you have as much? as many casualties as before? Uh, uh, in, uh, we had been, by the time we had been, uh, a general hospital is set up to take care of 1,000 patients. Mm -hmm. And in North Africa, we had as many as 1,100, and we couldn't take, uh, th that filled us up. There, mm -hmm. was, there was no way to expand there in the way the place was built. Uh, in, uh, in Rome, uh, two weeks after we opened, we had 1,500 patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're still pretty busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, did things uh, did things quiet down at all as you got into the fall? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It did. Uh, uh, gave gave us a chance to go uh, to to. Uh, to the Vatican to see see Rome. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay. Now, what impression by this time did you have of the Italian people themselves? Or uh, well, uh, they were uh, very nice. Uh, 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 
I, we had a friendly little 10 or 12 year old boy that uh, came through the, our, our outfit to really uh, not begging, but you know, looking for candy or something. And uh, uh, he invited me to come to his house uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, his Miglietta, um, uh, Sesto and, and Mary Maria Miglietta. And uh, they were they were very nice, and uh, so there toward the uh, the end in in, in Italy uh, in, in Naples uh, had a chance to uh, take uh, Evie uh, to 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 her their home for mm -hmm. for dinner. We we celebrated my uh, my birthday at the Migliettas. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, let's see if you, so did you kind of just, so when you had some time off or whatever, when you were in Rome, could you, did you travel around or just well, stay in the city? Uh, or? No, um, I didn't have that much time. Okay. Uh, I was trying, um, uh, that's a, a little fuzzy in my mind, uh, like uh, uh, I, I wasn't with Evelyn, but with some of the other GIs when we went to Florence. But I, I'm not sure whether that was when we were at in Rome or in Livorno, mm -hmm. but I, I, I got to visit uh, Florence anyway. And, uh, All right. And, uh, All right. Now, did, did your hospital have pretty much the same personnel the whole time? Uh, the the doctors and nurses stayed pretty stable. Mm -hmm. uh, the the men changed quite a bit. Uh, uh, some uh, uh, were got transferred to other uh, a few a few uh, bad ended up in the brig. A few okay. of them. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, generally, well, we 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 kept uh, uh, right around 500 mm -hmm. enlisted men. But you also had a lot of the same people the whole time. Yes, so yeah, the, your, yes, your own I little a, community. I had a group of good friends that we were from the beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, while you were in Italy, uh, how much communication did you have with people back home? Um, uh, it was uh, the the mail was pretty. Uh, they uh, uh, they had v mail uh, then, and uh, m my uh, uh, we didn't use it. I I would just write a regular letter, mm -hmm. and, uh, and but my mother sent me uh, v mails, and uh, the, it was good. Mm -hmm. It was it was pretty much on time, and uh, there, there wasn't. Uh, I I can't I didn't need anything from I, right. uh, the only request that I can remember of that uh, uh, I always uh, liked uh, jockey knit shorts better than uh, boxers mm -hmm. and uh, of course um, we had GI brown boxer uh, shorts in the army and I I wrote to my mother and said do you do you think you could send me uh, three pairs of jockey shorts. Mm -hmm. And in in fairly short time they arrived. Uh, no, no rubber in the mm -hmm. top. Two two little buttons on each side for adjustment. Right. Uh, that, that was uh, that was my introduction into what was going on back at home. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, now. Uh, basically, the way the the campaign in Italy works is we got north of Rome and we kind of stalled for a while yep. into the winter, and then in the spring they have the final offensive and the push northward. Now, when did your hospital move from Rome to Livorno? Is that I I, do, uh, I guess it's I'm a, I'm a little hazy, right? I, yeah. I don't know exactly uh, when. Uh, uh, it would have something to do. Uh, with 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 was Monte Cassino was that, that all? That was over. That was over. That was yeah. Over, yeah. But there were more fortified lines north of Rome. Yeah. 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 But I guess I, I think it was the end. It was late '44. It was still yeah. in '44 when you moved. Yeah. At least that's what the book says. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, and 
the I know when uh, at uh, then we must have still been at uh, during Monte Cassino, you know, uh, backing up. We were talking about uh, the 12th General Hospital back in North Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going under regulations or standards of World War One then, which was that a station uh, on a general hospital should be 300 miles behind the lines. Mm -hmm. Well, that was no that was no good. Right. Uh, it was, uh, uh, but in uh, at that point of Monte Cassino, we were on the front line. Right. That was in that final German push. Uh, they were they were real close to us, uh, uh, and that's what I. I couldn't remember whether we were in, in Rome or Livorno at that point, but... Uh, um, well, I don't think that the Germans counterattacked close to Rome or close to Naples, but it might or, have been at the tor in the winter or early spring of 44, the Germans may have counterattacked uh, and gotten close to Livorno briefly. Uh, uh, I mean, but they counterattacked before they ran away. Uh, yeah. That it was the last uh, yeah. straw for them wherever it was, mm -hmm. but uh, we uh, it, we were aware of uh, the, the difference of uh, okay. not that uh, we, we didn't uh, we got bombed a few times in in Naples mm -hmm. because they uh, uh, the, those hospitals weren't in the right place there. They were right on the Bay of Naples okay. and uh, they just maybe a little final farewell to mm -hmm. us. They they dropped a few bombs uh, on uh, on Ma Naples Harbor right. while we were there. But, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so you do Naples, you do Rome, end of the year you go up to Livorno, mm. uh, and that's just a port city farther up the coast. Uh, what kind of facilities did you have in Livorno? Were you in a hospital? Uh, or they, uh, uh, they were buildings that had already been set up, and uh, uh, it may have, of course, uh, looking back, you wish that you uh, had had a chance to to learn more, mm -hmm. but uh, I think Mussolini probably had something to do with, uh, you know, uh, in later days, of course, they saluted him then, uh, but uh, he had, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you this book, uh, uh, they were very uh, ornate, uh, his, uh, th they called it Mussolini style, mm -hmm. and you could almost see it. And, and uh, the the buildings that we were in uh, in Livorno w were built. Th they looked like those buildings that mm -hmm. that were finished or unfinished down in Naples. Yeah. Uh, Did those try to look a little bit like classical Roman ones? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what they were aiming at. Mm -hmm. But they uh, didn't turn out too good. No, <laughs> not so much. All right now. When you were in Livorno, that's getting late in the war, uh, and so were things quieter than before, or did you still have a lot of casualties? Oh, it was quiet. There was nothing, nothing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, as soon as, uh, as soon as the well, the, then the war. When was that? June, uh, June, like in May, really. Uh, May, May, right? Uh, we we were really. Uh, I, I actually you know, was, I, I'm not sure what my, uh, I have all of my army papers in the lockbox at the bank. Uh, one of these days, I, uh, I'm not sure whether I was in the, uh, if my discharge papers say that I was in the army or, or the Air Force because they, they put me uh, in, uh, in Naples. Uh, the Air Force had a little uh, dispensary uh, there, uh, and uh, you know if you scratched yourself or something like that, uh, um, they uh, and so I, I was in charge of that, just in name only, right. uh, and nothing to do. Okay, so and, that's sort of after the war. So so when the war in Europe ended, how long did the 12th General Hospital stay in Livorno? 
Did the oh, hospital well, leave and they, they stayed? Uh, or? Yeah, uh, I'll find I'll find that date uh, mm -hmm. for you. But uh, we we were uh, officially disbanded or whatever the correct word mm -hmm. was for in in Livorno. Right. It was uh, mm -hmm. okay. And then at that point. Uh, did you have to stay in Italy because it was you just a matter of waiting for a ride home? Okay, and uh, and uh, th that was uh, turned out to be very uh, very pleasant. It was on a uh, an Italian luxury liner mm -hmm. that uh, we we uh, came that had been re it had it had been Renz uh, not scuttled, but the Germans had taken everything. Out of it, right. and, and they disabled it. Uh, uh, the, everyone wondered why they didn't didn't sink it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at not too much cost, uh, the, uh, the 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 navy brought it back into workable mm -hmm. uh, ship uh, shape, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was built to take. Uh, uh, th Three thousand passengers. We brought four thousand. Home uh, on it. Uh, okay, but your entire hospital could go on together. It, uh, uh, I guess, a, a few of the girls had already gotten a ride mm -hmm. on some other ship, mm -hmm. but the, most of us were were on the uh, on the boat. I, I didn't know about Evie, but uh, we were standing on deck, and one of my friends said, "Look who's getting on the ship." Mm -hmm. <laughs> She oh, there she was when he came home okay. on the same ship we did. Yeah. Now, what time of year was that? Uh, October. October. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and and what kind of weather did you have going back? Oh, it, it, coming back, oh, well, uh, smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the the ship made a difference too. Yeah. But uh, but it, the the crossing was very rough going over. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a. Uh, one aside on that was uh, uh, there were, I mentioned there were 20 ships in our convoy, uh, and some, uh, and because I was uh, up uh, up high, uh, taking care of my one patient up there, I didn't know too much of what was going on outside. Uh, so uh, some of the people said that two destroyers were with us in the convoy. Mm -hmm. Some said three. There was a debate on whether we had two or three destroyers uh, with us in the in the convoy but uh, they all uh, everything turned uh, south uh, to Casablanca except mm -hmm. five ships right and uh, and then oh, well, I, I didn't mention the, the blue lights that we safely yeah. got through right. uh, you mentioned the streets that, yeah. of Gibraltar and, and then we went right to work in Ain El Turk uh, on, on Christmas Day. Right. And New Year's Day, we kind of took the, the, the day off to relax a little bit. So we were looking out to the Mediterranean, and uh, the, the first convoy uh, following ours it came through on, on, on New Year's Day. And there was, a, I don't recall whether we heard anything or just saw a puff, but it turned, it was hit by a, a, a submarine, mm -hmm. something got them, uh, torpedoed some way. And uh, uh, fortunately for loss of life, uh, it was a tanker, mm -hmm. uh, so there weren't many men lost. But it, it uh, blew up, yep. and uh, it uh, it took about a month for the oil slick to. They had the engineers had to come in and clean up our shoreline. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, All right. We uh, we we couldn't go swimming anyway uh, yet. The well, it was too cold, yeah. and and they didn't let us go, go in until it had been double checked for. Uh, for bombs uh, too, or uh, mm -hmm. you know, booby traps. All right. Now, when when you come home, where did you land? When you got home to the U.S., where did you land? Uh, I, I I'm I'm not I'm not sure uh, uh, where we landed. Uh, um, 
but we again uh, may be the same place we mm -hmm. took off because we got on trains again and went to Camp Kilmer. Okay, yeah, so mm -hmm. probably still New York Harbor somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and then from, were you discharged at Camp Kilmer or did they send no, you somewhere no, else? No, no, uh, uh, Then uh, after a couple of days at, at Kilmer, then we got on trains again uh, and uh, 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 back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of the... Uh, uh, you know, we had one, at least one stopover in the Indian Indian Gap somewhere in along Pennsylvania. In, uh, there, and that was an overnight stop, and then the, the next day uh, we got back to in Indiana, um, uh, but uh, it, it wasn't uh, Fort Benjamin Harrison where we had been before. It was some other camp uh, in Atterbury. Uh, Oh. Atterbury? Atterbury, exactly. That's where I was discharged. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, we've gotten in your story to the point where you get yourself discharged from the Army mm -hmm. uh, in Indiana late in 1945. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that you're out of the Army, what did you do next? Uh, okay. Well, uh, I uh, debated going back for more schooling, but... Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had graduated. When, yeah. I had graduated. Wait, when did you get married? Oh, uh, oh in uh, uh, August 9th, 1945. Right. So you were already married before you came home. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Yep. So then you said you kind of debated uh, going so, to school? Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, my... Uh, uh, my wife, uh, uh, Evie, uh, was originally from uh, Milwaukee. Was mm -hmm. her that was her home, uh, uh, and she went to uh, uh, she got her nurses training uh, in for, uh, in, uh, in in Milwaukee, uh, and uh, at uh, at a hospital, and then when she graduated. Uh, she stayed on uh, there for for more training in anesthesia, uh, and then after a year of that training, uh, uh, in the meantime, her dad had retired and, and built a home in Fish Creek up in Door, Door County, mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful country right right on Green Bay. Uh, and so uh, then, so, so she wanted to be near her home, so she went to work doing anesthesia uh, at Door County Memorial Hospital, but uh, she couldn't really, uh, well, she didn't have a car, so uh, she didn't drive 25 miles to north to Fish Creek. Mm -hmm. She had an apartment in Sturgeon Bay, so she actually never lived uh, in in this beautiful mm -hmm. home in Fish Creek on on Green Bay, uh, then she decided to join uh, the Army Nurse Corps, uh, and uh, and she uh, uh, went to went down to Chicago because uh, this uh, this outfit was from uh, uh, Northwestern University, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she made all the arrangements. And, and and joined, uh, and uh, but she she did anesthesia uh, up north in, mm -hmm. in Door County, and uh, and then that was that was what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, okay. uh, but now you're back. So n now we're, now we're back, uh, and um, uh, she. Uh, didn't know for she she didn't work uh, uh, for a while, uh, uh, but uh, she had a little money and I had a little money, uh, uh, so in nineteen well, I went to work again for Mr. Klein mm -hmm. in the Morton, uh, but that was uh, that was agreeable with everybody that that was kind of temporary mm -hmm. because it wasn't a big enough. Yeah. Uh, a job, um, and I knew Henry Klein would, uh, he knew a lot of people, 
So uh, in, in 1948, um, with the little money that we put together, well, we didn't know we were going to need any money then. We were, uh, are, are, you, uh, are you a Grand Rapids native? No. You, no. I lived here for 25 years, but that's uh, all. Okay, well, uh, then uh, you, you don't remember the Morton Men's Shop, uh, no. But do you remember the George Bullis Men's Store? It was you know, uh, that was uh, down downtown. That's uh, when right after the service when I got home, uh, everything was that was before the mall, so mm -hmm. everything was still downtown. Right. The the, uh, the department stores and uh, uh, George Bullis Men's Store, uh, uh, and they were in the Peninsula Club building, mm -hmm. which was that was the uh, that was a most of the uh, businessmen belonged mm -hmm. to the Penn Club. It was a fairly prestigious place. Right. And um, uh, Mr. Klein took me in there in 1948 and uh, told Mr. George Bullis that uh, I should work for him. And, uh, uh, and Mr. Bullis uh, there was another men's store, the oldest one in town, A. May and Son. Uh, Mr. Bullis had worked for them and then went on his own, opened his own store. Mm -hmm. He opened it in August of 1941. So four or five months later, when Pearl Harbor came along, mm -hmm. there was no very little clothing available. So he just sat there, and when he'd get a few suits in, he'd make telephone calls and tell people, "I've got a, I've got a suit," mm -hmm. and then and he'd have a tailor hired for a one day a week or something like that, and that's how it worked. So it was nice that when I walked in in 1948, uh, he was just in the throes of wanting to. Uh, enlarges. Uh, he was starting to do do business. Mm -hmm. He had never had a sale before. They didn't need it because he didn't have enough merchandise. So uh, we, uh, I, I became a stockholder and part owner of the George Bullis Men's Store, mm -hmm. and uh, so I went in as vice president, and that was in 1948. And, and stayed until the store closed in 1991. Oh. Fifty years exactly as the, the store was open, mm -hmm. and I was with them 43 of those years. And uh, uh, Mr. Bullis Sr. Uh, developed Parkinson's, so he was pretty much out of the, uh, he came down some, to, mm -hmm. but uh, his young son, George Bullis, who once told me when he when he was in high school, and he worked in the store and during the summer, uh, I said, "What do you think you're going to do when you uh, get out?" Uh, and he said, "I I don't know, but I I know one thing. I don't want to be in the retail business." Mm -hmm. uh, but then when he got out of college, he got in a little different slant, and uh, uh, and Mr. Bullis was able to retire totally mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they they realized that I was an important part of the uh, the business so mm -hmm. that's why it, uh, it it worked out very nicely for me to uh, mm -hmm. stay mm -hmm. all right all right now uh, when you think back to the time that you spent uh, in the army uh, aside from the fact that you met your wife there, uh, how do you think your time in the service affected you? Or what did you take out of that? I, uh, I learned to be tolerant of other people. I certainly, uh, <laughs> like, hurry up and wait comes to uh, mind. Uh, uh, with me, but uh, I I made some life lifelong friends in the army. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, most of them were a very very classy bunch of. Uh, 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 you didn't realize how hard people 
can work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. In that sense, was it a little bit of a shock to come back to civilian life? Uh, no, uh, okay. no, no, it was, it was still good, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, to, to come back, but uh, no, but, uh, and, and in spite of uh, a lot of problem, when you, when you got, when you're working in those numbers, there's naturally going to be, uh, I, I would say I think the Army did pretty well, mm -hmm. uh, uh, those, uh, the ships that I, I was telling you about, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how the logistics worked on that, but uh, someone must have known what they were doing to, mm -hmm. to that one of the three ships ours mm -hmm. that had no nurses on us yep. and uh, they let us off at one port and the other two ships went on to another. That's, I, yeah. somebody was thinking. Right. You know, you know, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, uh, you've got a very good story. So i just like to, to close here by thanking you for talking to me today. Well, I, I appreciate your coming. <laughs>